So we're going to close out today with our series on grow. And I feel like the Lord spoke this to my heart um, some months before even the end of last year. And I am going to share with you. We are going to, we've been preaching out of the book of Ephesians. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter in verse 15. Some of you, I hope that you get this memorized. I've hoped that I've preached on it long enough. I hope that you've heard me read it long enough that you have this scripture memorized. Because part of growing is to learn and to memorize and to read until it becomes part of who you are. That is the growing that we need to do. It is not enough just to experience Christ, but it is to experience Christ and grow and disciple others. You see, the church for so long has been evangelistically oriented that all we want to do is to lead someone to Christ. We stand up, we give large opportunities for people to accept Christ and to give their hearts to Christ, but they fail to do the second part of that, and that is to grow. Amen? Because if you're not growing, you are dying. Turn to somebody and say, are you growing or are you dying? Because you're one of those two things. You're either growing or you're dying. And the nature of growth comes in in this particular section of Scripture. It says, but speaking the truth in love, that you may grow up into all things, into Him who is the head, Christ. Now, this acronym that, if you will, I, I've spelled out and, and, and brought out the letters GROW. So go ahead, Johnny, and pull that up. GROW, G-R-O-W. Giving ourselves to God completely. Read, repent, and repeat. Obey completely and walk. If we look at this, I'm going to talk this morning about the last two of those. Obey completely and walk with God totally. I want to talk this morning, and we're going to start off this morning, and we're going to kind of go with this as the O. How do we obey completely? You see, God requires us to obey Him. How many of you love it when your children or your grandchildren disobey you? I had one hand, and it was a facetiously raised hand. I, do you like it when your kids disobey you? Do you like it when Phil disobeys you? No, I'm just kidding. But how many of you, when, when your kids disobey, what you, you use the, the help and the hand of correction to discipline them and direct them to where they need to be, right? That's okay. The Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen? So, so I'm going to tell you something that God demands of us as His children that we obey him obedience is what god requires of us to obey him to be well disciplined as a child of god when we grow up we are to obey amen my dad at one time i asked him i said dad am i grown up yet and i was probably about four or five years old And dad looked at me and he said, son, I think you've got a lot of growing to do, but you're definitely not grown up yet. And I said, well, how do I know when I'm grown up? And he said, it's when you obey me without any complaining. I don't know that I'm grown up yet. Still working on that. And I'm still struggling with that, but I'm trying. But God requires us to obey him. God requires us to listen and obey. Amen? So many times we, we wonder, I, I, we will wonder, well, God, what do you want from me? God has already told us all that he wants from us. I'm going to share this with you in just a few minutes, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this next scripture up. Obey completely. I go back to 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, when God was dealing with uh, Saul, the king Saul, when he was placed as the king, and God had promised to bless him, and God would have given Saul everything that he had in store for the children of Israel. Saul was promised. He was good looking, he was was mature, he was head and shoulders above all, he was a great soldier, he was a, a wise and he was blessed by God to be in the position that he was given. But in 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter and verse 22, and it says, And then Samuel said, 
Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to heed than the fat of the rams. And we look at this and we begin to state and we begin to think about the idea that God loves our sacrifice more than he does our obedience. That's exactly what Saul did. Saul was given the opportunity to go and, and slaughter an army and God told him, go and destroy everything. Come on. And God said, go get rid of it all. You know, here, here's what we do. We'll obey God as long as it doesn't discomfort us. Come on. As long as it doesn't ruffle my plans. As long as I get what I want, ah, I'll obey you, God. But the minute that confrontation comes between what I want and what God wants, then my frustration begins to take place. I begin to have uh, frustrations of anger and situations to where I say, God, I begin to complain. And sometimes, sometimes I walk in disobedience to God because it's not what I want. It's not the way that I want it. And sometimes when God loves me so much that he will, the, the Bible says that whom God loves, he chastens, he disciplines. Don, just like you did when you were raising your sons, you know this, that when they disobey, sometimes you have to help them to obey. And you do that by, uh, by uh, just the way God, did. the Bible says whom God loves, he chastens, he disciplines, he, he, sometimes he disciplines you. Do you know how God disciplines you? Yeah, have you, have you guys ever been, uh, put one of your kids in, in time out? Some of you kids are nodding yes now. I've been there before. Most of the time, I just got a whipping and then put in time out. My mom said that you, they could whip me and it didn't really matter. I, I was that hard-headed that it didn't really matter when I got a whipping. But when I was set with a timeout, and I would sit with my back to my sister's back, and we would sit there back to back. And we would sit there, and my mom would say, you're going to sit there for at least 15 minutes. Man, it would kill me. That would kill me. Because I couldn't stand to be still. I couldn't stand to sit still. And, and I, was, I would twiddle my feet and I would, I would look and wonder what time it was. And, and I would go on and on about it. And I could Listen, sometimes God knows, believe it or not, God knows how to discipline you. And sometimes he has to discipline you by taking those things that you have. Because if they, we put those before God and, and obedience to God, he has to take things from us. Because he knows that we don't need him. Come on. And, and, and I heard it said the other day, somebody was complaining. They said, God, I need a better job. I need more money. There's nothing wrong with asking God for that. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. But here's what I'm going to tell you something. When God gives you those things, don't put them before God because God will take them back. Come on. Amen. Stay with me and love me. Okay. I'm just, I'm preaching the word today. The, the Bible says God loves us enough that he ex requires of us obedience. And he says obedience is better than sacrifice. And we will sacrifice. We'll put our sacrificial face on. We'll sacrifice coming to church, giving up things, giving up. And there are people that say, I'm never going to church because I have too much to give up. Do you know that God doesn't expect you to give up anything except everything? And God says, if you give it all, then he'll give us everything back. I don't, some of the things you don't want back. Come on, amen. I love it when Brother McGuire was preaching last week and he said, you need to thank the Lord that your exes are exes, amen. <laughs> I, I bet on that metal. But when I look at this and I begin to realize what God was saying to Saul, he was saying to us today, that God requires obedience. And obedience is required for us to grow. When we grow, we begin to show that we are disciplined enough to do what God has said. It is so important. And we, we went over the R and read, repeat, and repent again and again and again. And you cannot do it enough. Because the more that I read it, the more that it corrects me and directs me. 
And the more that I know this word, the more that it can transform my life. The more that I become obedient to this word, the more that I become disciplined to God's growth. You see, I believe that we also are disciplined. Now, here's a scripture that the Lord threw at me just a few days ago, and then I began to chew on it uh, since the reading at the beginning of the year. In Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, we're going to tie into walking in just a minute, but this, this scripture, particular scripture, ties in with both. In Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, verses 12 and 13, it says, And, and now Israel... What does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord uh, your God and to walk in all of his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord with all of your heart, with your soul. And it says, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statues, which I command you today for your good. Do you know that God didn't give us the commandments to control us? but to discipline us? Did you know that God wasn't trying to torture Eve in the Garden of Eden when he put the plant there and he said, you can have of all the fruits and all the trees that are in the garden except the one? And what was it that she wanted? The one that she couldn't have. Is anybody following this with me? Because I'm going to tell you something, what we do a lot of times when we start serving and following the Lord is we want what we know we shouldn't have. Because somebody else has it, because other things look, and because it's enticing, because it makes our flesh feel good. We've been talking about that on, on Wednesday nights, how that, that the lust of our flesh is something that drives us into the containment of desire that we don't need. Come on. Let me tell you why God doesn't give us sometimes the things that we ask for is because we are not obedient with what we have. Come on. Is it okay if I'm just going to sidestep just a second? I'll get back to where I am, but I'm a sidestep. If we're wondering, God, why don't you bless me? God, I, 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 want, to, I want to be blessed. I want to give, and God, I want to be able to give. If I'm not giving with what I have right now, with what I've got, and I'm not tithing over it, if I'm not obedient to that, then why would God give me more? Is this, is this on? Can you, is it because, maybe you need to turn that speaker how they may be missing it. Because I, I think what, what's happening is, is that we think God should give to us and bless us and bless us and bless us, and then we, it doesn't really matter if we obey or we follow God's command. This is, this is the struggle that we walk in is that we want to walk in the blessings of God, but we don't want to obey God. And God is saying, it's not the walking in, in the obedience to me unless you're doing what I tell you to do. Come on. Obedience is the requirement. If we're going to love God, we will obey God. The amens are getting slim, Joe. Here's what I'm talking about today. If I want God to, to bring to me and give to me and bless me, and I'm, I'm, uh, uh, the first thing I got to do is if I'm struggling with something, I got to look at it and say, God, am I doing what I know to do? Are you, are you dealing with me in a disciplinary way? Come on, I've been there. Mark, the Lord took me to the woodshed several times because I don't like to listen sometimes. And I've been there before. I, I, I was talking about this a couple Sunday nights ago when I was preaching about how that, 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 that I, had, I had begged God for something and, and, we were, we, and all of a sudden God said, no, 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 you don't need that. And, and, and I threw a fit because it didn't go my way. And God said, no. And I realized later that all that would have done has caused me more grief and more heartache. You see, God requires of us obedience. And God requires of us. If we are going to talk about growth, then we are going to talk about how that we can obey Him. You see, the, this scripture breaks it down in such a way. When, when we read this, God is speaking to Moses and He's writing here about to the children of Israel. And He begins to give them the instruction. 
Even Jesus himself said, this is the greatest commandment, that you love the Lord God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and body. And then he said, the greatest extent of that is the next part of my series of messages that I'm going to be preaching about the love. Because we're told to love our neighbor as ourself. Listen, if we are going to love like God teaches us to love, then we are going to love without regards to the past or the presence or the color of a person's skin or the language they speak or the place they come from. That's a, I gotta, I gotta move on how I'm preaching my, my messages. The Bible teaches us and tells us that we are going to obey the Lord, then we must obey Him by taking the statutes. How can I know what the Lord commands of me? How can I know what the Lord requires of me? It's right there before you. God, this is what you require of us. Galatians 5, He talks about that we are to walk then and how we are to walk. And we are to walk in the Spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, in Galatians, this particular section of Scripture, we referred to this on Wednesday night when we were studying in the book of Romans, but it says, uh, I say, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now that term there, walk in the Spirit, makes you uh, think of something that you're walking uh, without living in the world. That you're, you're, When you walk in the Spirit, that's simply saying... I'm living in the Spirit. To walk is to live in. I'm living in the Spirit. I'm, I'm obeying God completely. Everything about me from Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, every day, I am obeying and walking in His presence. You don't just show up on Sunday and walk in His presence and then leave Him here and pick Him up again because Monday you can live like the devil. That's not what. You don't get a day off. You don't get to walk in the Spirit when you feel good and, and when, you're, when you're blessed and, and then not when you don't. Do you hear me? When you walk in the Spirit, it's a continuation of a daily lifestyle in Him. And some of us, we, 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 we zip in and out of that place. Sometimes we've got to realize that the reason that we're falling into this trap of the lust of our flesh, the desire to feed what I want, comes from the idea that I'm walking out of the Spirit and I'm missing the will of God for my life. What God requires of me is that obedience continuing to walk in Him. Go ahead and pull that next scripture up. Galatians, the fifth chapter, later on in the, the 25th verse, it says, and if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us live in the Spirit. Go ahead, pull the next one up. Romans, the eighth chapter, says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. There is a, a fine line between living for yourself and living for God. Come on. When I read the Scripture, I read the promises of God. And if I put God first, I know that He will never leave me nor forsake me. I, I know that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory because that's a promise that God has in his word for me. I, I have the promises of God that instruct me and, and, and I read those and when, I, when I'm struggling, if, if I have put God first, then I can hold on to that promise and hold God to that promise if I have done my part to walk in obedience. Then if I'm walking in obedience, I say, God, your word says... And I hear his word, and I say his word, that by your stripes I am healed. Come on, amen? Now, now sometimes I've got to realize that there is a purpose for what God is doing, and there's a plan with what God is doing. There's some things that God is doing, and I have to look at that and say, God, here I am. I open this up, and I say, God, this is what you tell me. 
And, and, and if we will begin to listen to what God's saying, the Spirit will speak if we have ears to hear. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And so many times we come to the place to where our hearing needs to be turned up so we can listen to what God is saying. Growing is not, in, in the spiritual world, growing is not something that just happens. And I shared this with you when we first started this series, that growth is normal. Amen? Growth is normal. When you see a child, I remember when you were just a baby and your mama brought you to dedicate you. And you were so cute and little, I could almost hold you in one little hand. And now you're growing up and you're almost as tall as your mom. It's normal to see them grow. It's normal to see the progression of it. It's normal to put the seed in the ground and watch the seed grow and become what it is to grow into. It's normal. A good gardener knows that when you put it in the ground, you expect it to bear fruit as it grows and matures. Jesus said that with the fig tree. We see that. Jesus looks at us to see the progress of our growth and look at us. And he sees the growth both physically, but see, spiritually is done intentionally that we grow. It doesn't just happen. Come on. The more that I walk with God, the more that I read his word, the more that I see those things happen, the more that I can grow in him. And there's no limitation. There's nothing to stop me from growing. Now, I'm inhibited by a, a, a challenge of verticality. I'm not very tall, but I'm still growing. Richard, I'm growing. I'm just growing this way instead of this way. But, but I'm not going to get a lot taller. But spiritually, when David looked at Goliath, Goliath saw him in his physical stature and looked at David and said, "This, why did you bring this little runt before me? Why did you do this? Bring this little guy. And he looked at his physical stature. But oh, when God looked at David and God set David to it, David didn't say, see me, see how little I am. No, what he said is, I'm bigger than you because the God in me is bigger than you. And when David faced the giant, he knew the authority that it was in because he was walking in the spirit of the Lord. And him and God had a work going and they had it. And he knew the confidence level that he was with God and God was with him. When David was facing the giant. You know how the story goes. He looked at the giant, took the sling, the weapon that God had given him. He didn't need the sword, but he ended up using the sword. Come on, remember? Because he finished the job. He took the giant down with the stone, but he cut his head off. Let me tell you something. When you walk in obedience, you're going to cut the head off of the enemy that's been trying to pursue you. Come on, amen? Some of you need to quit playing with the problems that you killed. Come on. That's a whole nother message there. When we begin to grow... It is a process. When you see that uh, seed grow, you begin to know and expect the maturity of it. When you plant that seed, it begins to grow. Now, a good farmer knows how the plant that he's planted will grow. You know the seasons that it grows in. You know the soil that it needs. You know how it's going to bloom and mature. And you know that when those blossoms begin to come on the tree, you know what's coming next. When the corn stalk begins to grow, you know what it looks like when it begins to grow. My mom, she's not a good farmer, but she loved to help my dad. And my dad was a gardener, and he had a garden, and he had a big garden, and he planted some lima beans. And he put those lima beans out, and he was so thrilled because he said, those should be coming up pretty soon, and I can't wait to see them. And, and, and he said, I'm going to see. I, and my dad loves any kind of food out of the garden, but he said, those, those are going to be good. And you know what? As those begin to grow, the lima beans, and for those of you who don't know how a lima bean grows, it grows, the whole bean comes up out of the ground. The root grows down from the bottom. 
And then it just grows up and it opens up and begins to bloom from that point. Well, my mom, being the lack of the farmer and had no knowledge of it, decided that she would help my dad. And she said, well, I don't know why Lloyd planted those and did not push them down in the ground. So my mom went out and pushed them all back down in the ground. And what good was growing ended up dying. Because she didn't know how it was to grow. And sometimes if you're looking at the expectations of growing just like somebody else, I know that all of you want to grow up and be just like me. I didn't see any. There was a, somebody laughed. I don't know how. I don't think you'll ever be short and bald and have no hair. I can tell you this. When I look at the way that God designed and ordered, I'm glad that we're not just alike. Because God put you together the way he designed you to work. And he put me together the way he put me together because he knows how he wants us to grow. He knows how he wants to use us and what he wants to do with us. And what I've got to commit to is saying, God, help me be the best me that you designed me to be so that I can bring glory and honor and praise to you. How many of you have just stopped long enough to do that to God? This, the best thing to do at the beginning of any year is to say, God, help me to be the best me that you want me to be this year. See, Pastor, that's not very much. But if it's the best you, then God has a purpose for you. Come on, amen. God's gifted you. God's given you talents and abilities. And some of us, we've set on those talents and abilities. And God is saying it's time to polish them and perform. If you're growing, do what God has placed within you. Your skill level may be different. I'm glad of that. Amen? I'm glad of that. And when God uses us in the body of Christ, I know that sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but God knows what he's doing when he brings us together. When we do things in events, like yesterday, it was so neat to be able to see everybody come together. The, the skill set that we had was, was really unique. It didn't seem like a challenge, but it did. And some were very organized, and they had it laid out, and they figured out, and they said, let's do it this way, and this way works the best. And, and me, I'm just helping everybody out, and I'm just running everywhere, because if it went up to me, we'd just dump the bread out and throw the mustard on it and mayonnaise, and we'd be done. But they had it organized and they put it together and they said, this is the way that it works the best. And we, we did all those sandwiches in just as much time as we did the 150 last time. Because we're learning what we're doing and we're growing in that ministry. Come on. And if the pastor would have bought enough meat, we would have had more. But here's what I'm going to tell you. God puts us together so that we can fitly join. Amen? That's what the body of Christ is, is to fitly join us together, bring us together, because we can bring together to, to bring what he has. Go ahead and pull that last one up. This is something that I pulled off the Internet, but I, I, from the very beginning of me preparing this, remember the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Be patient, be humble, and don't give up. Here's what I'm going to tell you. This last part of this message in this message series is this. God started to work in you from the very beginning of this sermon series when you gave your life completely to Him. For some of you, that's been years ago. For some of you, that's been a long time coming. But God designed and the more that you surrender your life and walk in obedience to Him, the more that you will see God help you grow. You didn't get, listen, you're not going to grow there overnight. You're not going to be the mature spiritual Christian overnight. But the more that I read in His Word and the more that I read and I follow Christ and the more that I, I'm around the believers, that's why we need to be together. Come on. We tell the men our men's breakfast every time. Our men's slogan is this, iron sharpens iron. Do you know that if I don't touch a sharpener to my tool, 
my axe blade, it will not get sharpened. It takes metal to sharpen the metal. It takes it so you can sharpen the blade to use it properly. And when God uses us, He takes the edges off of us. He takes the rough stuff off of us and makes us so that we can work together. But you're going to have to be patient. Come on. How many of you know that that's hard to do? Do you know that maturity happens spiritually too? When I was just a young Christian, I expected God to do it, and I'd throw a fit if He didn't do it. And if He didn't do it when I thought He would, then God, I just felt like He failed me. Anybody ever been there? And we throw our fit, and we get all mad, and God says, I'm working on you to teach you patience. And, and some of you, God is still working with you in this battle of patience. You've got to trust God completely. You've got to obey Him to the point where you say, God, if this is what you want from me, then I will glorify you in it. Because out of this, I will sing praises to your name. Out of this, I will give glory and honor and praise. But that last line is what really jumped out at me. No matter what, don't give up. Don't give up. You can't quit or you begin to die. Don't give up. You see, that's the process that we begin to die spiritually is when we just say, I can't. I quit. I'm done. See, the problem with that is, is that when you come to that place to say, I'm done, I quit, you're making God a liar. My Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My Bible tells me that with God's help, I can accomplish the task that is before me. And with my Bible, it tells me that I can, I can wait patiently and persevere for God's glory. And the more that I pursue the work of God and the hand of God in my life, the greater the opportunity for me to serve Him and to be used by Him. Roberto, where are you? Back there in the back. He hides from me back there, way back in the back. I want to close this today a little bit differently. This last slide, and go ahead and pull that next one up. It says, are you growing? God knows the design that you are. God knows what He's planned for your life. The Bible tells us that God knew you from your mother's womb. God knew and had a design for you and had a purpose and a plan for you. And you may be still wondering, God, what do you want from me? Do you know that if you ever take time to hear, we got some amazing testimonies of where God has brought people from in our church. Come on. Some of us have been through some amazing things. From where we came from to where God wants us to be. To, to the circumstances that brought us to where we are. We didn't plan it, but God designed it. And, and sometimes we don't, we don't plan the steps, do we? But God does. And God knows what He's doing and He's helping us to because He wants to grow. And if we can grow in the place and the way that God wants us to, we'll begin to blossom the way He wants us to blossom. And I'm going to tell you something. As I'm looking around this congregation, God is bringing us and some of us are tired and some of us are saying, I don't know if I can press on any longer. I don't know what more I can do. God, then you need to give us strength. Come on, amen. You need to give me a renewed energy I love it you know my cell phone I use it all the time not near as much as my mother-in-law but I use it a lot and, and my my battery will run down and I'll look at it and I'll be I'll be be late at night and I'm thinking man my battery's almost dead and I'll say I know what I got to do I got to plug it in to a charger and I'll lay it there in the morning, it'll be fully recharged. It'll say 100%. Unless 
the charger is not plugged in. I know none of you are that silly, but I did that one night. I woke up in the morning, drinking my cup of coffee, pulled my phone up and said, let me see what I... My phone's dead. What's wrong with this thing? I went in the room and I looked and with my eyes half open, I could see the charger was laying there and it was laying in the floor, unplugged. I'm going to tell you something. If you feel yourself running down, it's not because God's done with you. It's because maybe you need to plug in again. Maybe you need to recharge again. Refocus your life. Because when God's done with you, He'll say, come home. But until then, we just need to be recharged. We need to be plugged in. We need to get in, in before him and pray and say, God, fill me again and again and again. God, I, I, I want to be what you want me to be. I want to obey you and serve you in the ways that you want me to. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't quit, Phil, when it got tough? When, when they were beating him, he didn't say, ah, these guys aren't really worth it. He didn't say, ah, I can't do this anymore. My physical body, I just can't. No, you know what he did? He rose to the challenge because he knew his father would help him. Amen? He knew that. Now, I want us to, to think about this. And I, the reason that I said, are you growing? Because it needs to be a question. There are two people in this room right now that know if you're growing or not. I can tell you this, my wife doesn't know if I'm growing. I know if I'm growing, and God knows if I'm growing. If I'm not growing, then I am dying. Come on. If I am not growing, then I am dying. How do I begin to die? Distancing myself from God. Not walking in obedience with God's word distancing myself from him and the more that I do that the further I walk from the growth that God has for me Amen. I want us to stand all across this place today and I really feel like it's important for us to do this as a congregation I think it's important for us to do this as a body because that's what we are as a body of Christ. We've got some, we've got some growth. My, my mom, when she comes, every time she comes, she says, I'm so thrilled to come to your church because I see new faces every time I come. I said, no, mom, we've just changed. Our faces are the, we're the same, but we just changed. No, we've got a lot of new growth, a lot of new things. Overseer told me the other day, he, I mean, it had been less than, what, three months, four months since he was here last time? He told me, he said, I'm amazed. Where did all these new people come from? I look at the freeway, Don, and when I drive on it, I'm, it's so crowded. that I mean, it's bumper to bumper. And I looked out over that large mass of people that were driving on the freeway, and I said, where did all these people come from? You know what the Lord told me? He said, that's your harvest. That's your field. you got some work to do, son. Get busy. God's not through with us yet, church. He's got so much for us to do. He's got so much for us to reach. There are so many that God has called us to reach. It's time for us to grow to what we need to be and do what we need to do to discipline ourselves. Amen?